Hello, Anzoff. Hello, everyone. So this is going to be more of a statement rather than any form of um, criticism. Um, I was born in Germany, uh, lived there for the first 10 years of my life, and as a result, I'm very interested in the history of East Germany while it was still part of the Soviet bloc, and interested in the history since reunification and the impact that it's had on East Germany and West Germany. And doubly so since I consider myself a socialist, so um, examples of the systems that were at least considered socialist or had socialist aspects throughout history are very interesting to me. But I do, uh, I do take more negatives out of the economic situation in the German Democratic Republic, I think. Uh, it was certainly healthy compared to a lot of the other Soviet bloc nations, but I think to be fair, one big aspect there is that Germany had a very high level of education after, you know, before the war and after the war and before the wall went up. And that level of education like is usually the case in some way, um, was maintained. And it, you know, historically, living standards and productivity did, especially towards the end of the uh, Soviet Union, fall well behind Western norms. And in many ways, it was actually the, the low wages, comparatively, that were still keeping the GDR afloat, barely, with West German cash injections, without which uh, East Germany would have faced a severe disaster. And when Germany was reunified, a lot of the infrastructure in Eastern Germany was really so hopelessly outdated. It was pretty much beyond modernization, and that went for a lot of industry as well. It might have been competitive in the very, very um, protectionist system that the Soviet Union had built up, but against modern production methods, a lot of the factories, a lot of the infrastructure were just hopelessly outdated. And updating that infrastructure has come at a huge cost to West Germany, I mean to the tune of about 1.3 trillion euros, um, which is a very large amount, especially considering, I mean, the trillion in the U.S. was a big deal, but obviously the U.S. economy is considerably larger than the German economy. Uh, and of course, it's, it's very true that a lot of that money did go in to line the pockets of various capitalists, because, first of all, they obviously um, earned a lot of money rebuilding, um, but second of all, a lot of companies were paid exorbitant amounts of money to create workplaces in East Germany, uh, sometimes at uh, tens of thousands of, even hundreds of thousands of marks per workplace. And then, as soon as the terms of that kind of um, subsidy were, were up, they left. Uh, but still, I think, overall, the, um, the effort was definitely there by West Germany to bring East Germany to West German standards, and it has come at a high cost to West Germany as well. But as I'll talk about later, I think it's come at a tremendous cost to East Germany, especially in terms of um, their society. So I think West Germany had, West Germany had good intentions, not least because it is quite important that East Germany become productive for the health economically of all of Germany. Um, and I do think that a lot of the problems that East Germany was suffering from were problems that were caused by the mismanagement that occurred there while it was still the um, German Democratic Republic. So, I mean, poor planning, corruption, and I think the uh, the planned economy system also did not really succeed at maintaining a healthy economy. So I think that the leadership of the German Democratic Republic 
and more broadly the leadership of the Soviet Union, um, had mismanaged economies throughout the Soviet bloc, and its leadership failed its people both politically and economically. I mean, I think that basically after the, the Iron Curtain came down, the reason why, uh, why the socialist economies were so quickly consumed was, yes, in part because they were betrayed by their leaders. Um, leaders in Russia, leaders in Germany, were quick to sell out uh, the remains of industry to what in Russia would become the oligarchs um, and in Germany just to big corporations. And so I think this this kind of free market predation and corpse stripping that occurred in Russia and Germany and throughout the Soviet bloc um, was was horrible. But in the end, I think the reason why these socialist economies were consumed is because they were uh, up against a clever, stronger system, as much as I hate to say, and that system was free market capitalism. It was the underlying economic weakness of these countries that made them so vulnerable and that made the people so desperate that they would accept this wholesale destruction of their previous way of life. And I would say that today East Germans are economically, materially speaking at least, in a stronger, better position on average. Of course, how long that's going to go on is a question. I mean, it's pos if we keep going at this rate, then it's not too long till we return to the robber baron days of the 19th century, uh, where the, the uh, Soviet um, East Germany will look like a like a wonderland. Um, but despite the fact that I think East Germans are in fact materially in a better position in living in unified Germany today, their society was gravely damaged and it was really no respect at all for a people, many of whom had grown up in the system or spent most of their lives in the system, and who had grown up valuing security above sheer material prosperity. So people that might have wanted material things, but that actually valued the safety of having an assured job and um, social services more than that material prosperity. And people that in the end when reunification came did not understand at all the challenges that they would face in this free market system. And so the condescension and the dismissal that East Germans faced um, after reunification, when they were trying to deal with their problems and trying to um, trying to explain to other people, whilst despite certain um, increased material wealth, they were still struggling, um, that dismissal was terrible and very unjust. But I guess the, the real question is how good of a system was the system that was in place in the German Democratic Republic. How good a socialist system was it? I definitely appreciate the gains that were made under the Soviet system and certainly at least in the early years in Germany there was, uh, in East Germany there was uh, quite strong economic growth and in Russia early on there was phenomenal economic growth but I think ultimately the planners really failed to tackle the transition from a developing country to a developed country. Um, and I think a big reason for that is because they, like many champions and architects of capitalism in their ivory towers, neglect neglected the human element. They reduced it to numbers and calculations. They didn't understand humans and their needs properly. But capitalism had one advantage. In the capitalist system, there was another force. There were people at work that weren't at work in the socialist system of the day. The real world capitalists, the pragmatists, not the people in the ivory towers. The tricksters and the confidence fraudsters who well understood certain aspects of the human spirit. People who turned the reality of the gruesome, elitist, neo-Darwinist idea of free markets 
the interchangeability of human beings as just gears in that system. They turn that reality into this vision of freedom that while artificial has really um, has really succeeded and has really convinced a lot of people, especially in America, I think. I do think analysis of um, the German Democratic Republic can be very fruitful. I mean, I think we can draw confidence from the fact that the system, while it was flawed, did work. Um, and in some respects, at least, it worked well. It was a system that had no unemployment. In times when the West, West Germany faced unemployment in double digits, sometimes close to 20%. Um, it was a system that could assure cradle-to-grave protection for the members of its society. But in the end, I think that we have to accept that as a whole, the system was a failure. It was a failure, and it was a failure because it lost to capitalism, but it doubly so because its collapse has hobbled us since, has led others to unfairly dismiss us as impractical idealists chasing illusional hopes of democratic and just economies. Economies that are not there to free capital, but to free human beings. I think one of the, the biggest reason why it failed is because it was an undemocratic system. It was unaligned with human hopes and desires. It was ignorant of so much of our nature so while it strove to suppress the worst in us, it strove to suppress our egotism, it did not feed the best in us. And so the dark side of human nature reared its ugly head through black markets, through corruption, through nepotism, through elitism, through state violence and oppression. And in that system, just like in capitalism, we state numbers, we state statistics. We stayed dead, interchangeable units. I think what we can learn from both capitalism and state socialism is that we need to work on a system that incorporates true democracy, a system that feeds people's hearts and minds as well as their bellies. Because against the system of moral economics, amoral capitalism will become an immoral choice. And then we will have the moral high ground and the hearts and minds that we need to actually expand the system. Because I think if we manage to do that, then we'll have a system that we can spread, not by force, not by bloody revolution, but by moral authority, because it will be so in tune with people's uh, moral sense that they will want to change that system. And we need to generate that alternative for them, rather than looking too much to old systems that I think had these failures of democracy, that in the end, uh, meant that they were doomed from the beginning. Anyways, this is Church of STFU. See you guys all later.